हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे इज द सेकेंड वीडियो ऑफ द नॉन मेटलिक पाइपलाइन सीरीज नाउ ए डेज इन गल्फ एंड स्पेशल इन सऊदी अरेबिया यूजेस ऑफ नॉन मेटलिक पाइपलाइन इज गेटिंग पॉपुलर टू मेजर टाइप्स ऑफ नॉन मेटलिक पाइपलाइंस आर आर टी पी एंड आर टी आर सो लेट एस हैव सम वीडियो विथ री एन फोर्स थर्मो प्लास्टिक पाइप विच इज टर्म्ड एज आर टी पी वाट इज इट आर टी पी आर पाइप री एन फोर्स बाय हाई स्ट्रेंथ मेटेरियल ऑफ एन सिंथेटिक फाइबर सच एज ग्लास एरामिड और कार्बन फाइबर थर्मोफ्लेक्स आर टी पी इज पुलेबल रिलायबल सोल्यूशन फॉर ट्रांसपोर्टिंग हाइड्रोकार्बन्स रिफाइंड फ्यूएल्स एंड केमिकल्स ड्यू टू इट्स एक्सेप्शनल स्ट्रेंथ टू वेट रेशियो केमिकल कंपेटिबिलिटी एंड पैराफिन बिल्डअप रेजिस्टेंस द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द पाइप इज इट्स री एनफोर्समेंट आर टी पी हैज बिन रिप्लेसिंग स्टील इन मेनी एप्लीकेशन विद ग्रेट सक्सेस इंक्लूडिंग ऑयल एंड गैस पाइपलाइन प्रोजेक्ट because of its versatility and durability for example the proprietary five layer construction of thermoflex pipes consists of an abrasion resistance hdp outer jacket and aramid or glass fiber reinforcement what is meant by fiberglass pipe fiberglass pipe can describe many specific varieties of pipe with fiberglass composition the comparison considers the two most commonly used types of fiberglass pipe number 1 is dry glass fiber reinforcement where the problem with cyclic pressure loading is not from the fatigue resistance of glass fiber but from the abrasion of adjacent glass fibers and the second type is thermoset resin where the issues are the brittleness of the resin and quality control these types of pipes have higher risk of installation damage from overbending or impact which could lead to early failure let us discuss some advantages of rtp high pressure resistance the maximum pressure resistance of the system is 50 megapascal 40 times of plastic pipes high temperature resistance the maximum operating temperature of the system can be 130 degree centigrade which is 60 degree higher than plastic pipes easier installation with higher flexibility and adaptation of different terrains long lifetime six times of metal pipes two times of plastic pipes corrosion resistance non corrosive and environmental wall thickness the wall thickness is 1/4 of plastic pipes improving 30% of flow rate lightweight 40% of unit length of plastic pipes non scale the inner wall is smooth and non scale and the flow speed rate is two times of the metal pipes low friction low material density no noise in the flowing water strong joints double layer glass fiber superposition in joint hot melt socket never leaks low cost close to the cost of metal pipes and 40% lower than the plastic pipe lower total cost of ownership because of its greater durability and ease of maintenance the manufacturing and availability of rtp pipe rtp line pipe is manufactured using inert thermoplastic pressure barrier layer reinforced with high strength glass fibers embedded in epoxy matrix an outer thermoplastic layer is used for the added impact and wear resistance the result is a high pressure pipe immune to corrosion with few joints which can be rapidly installed in the field rtp is manufactured by overlapping a thermoplastic liner that is plain pe pipe with high strength fiber reinforced type an outer layer is extruded over the reinforcement surface to shield the fibers from damage rtp is a generic term referring to a reliable high strength fiber such as glass aramid or carbon its main features are corrosion resistance high operation pressure endurance and keeping flexibility at the same time it can be made into a reel that means continuous pipe which length from 10 meters to kilometers in one ring over the last few years the type of pipe has been acknowledged as a standard alternative solution to steel for oil field flow line applications by certain oil companies and operators 
An advantage of this pipe also is very fast installation time compared to steel pipe when considering the welding time as an average speeds up to 1 km per day have been reached installing RTP in ground surface. The reinforced thermoplastic pipes consist of three basic layers, an internal thermoplastic liner, a continuous fiber reinforcement helically wrapped around the pipe, and an external thermoplastic jacket. The liner acts as a bladder, the fiber reinforcement provides strength, and the jacket protects the load-bearing fibers. Let us have a flowchart for the RTR production technique. First, we need to acquire the raw material, then it has to go to extrusion process of inner pipe. It will be cooled, winding of reinforcement layer, followed by heating, then protective layer covering, then again it has to go through cooling, then finally it has to roll into the spools. Product identification has systematic technique or a coding system. I have taken an example from one of our pipe manufacturer. Let us discuss this. Product identification. A product identification number or PIN refers to fiber AR line pipe. The pin takes the following form. FS, LP, BB, then small BB, then CCCC, then within bracket D. What each of the abbreviation means? FS means fiber spa, this is the manufacturer name. LP, it is line pipe, that means it is prepared for pipeline. BB should be the nominal ID, whole inches. Small b slash b means nominal OD, fraction of inches. That means if a pipe is 6.25 inch, so capital BB will be 6 and small b by b will be 0.25. CCCC is the maximum allowable working pressure, operating pressure or MAOP. In our project, let's say it is 1500 PSI. Pressure barrier of material code is the last within bracket, which is termed as D. E is the HDP, X is HTP, where is D for RTP. These are all can be pre-decided by the manufacturer, procedure and manufacturer's engineers. Connector identification for the pipe connectors are available in two basic types, the service end connector and the pipe to pipe connector. These are identified with a product identification number also that takes the form like CHEX, capital X and small x, capital Y, capital Z and then small z. You can see in the picture. C stands for connector, H stands for design division. And E stands for the series, B for B series, C for C series, etc. XX for nominal OD, capital X for the whole inches, and small x is for the decimal parts of an inches. Let's say 6.25, capital X is 6, and 0.25 is the decimal parts of an inch. Y is the end termination. This is last but one, fifth abbreviation. It is for end termination. If we put W, it is for flanged assembly. If it is L, that means NPT thread assembly. If it is WX, this is extended well preparation. And the last digit is end termination size. Capital Z is for the nominal pipe size in inches. Small Z is for ANSI flange rating, which can be 0 for 150 pound, 3 for 900 pound, 1 for 300 pound, and 4 for 1500 pound. So this was the RTP product identification system. Now let us discuss how is the packaging and handling of RTP is being done. For the packaging, pipe is wrapped around the spool drum in layers to the desired length. The outermost layer must be at least 25 mm or 1 inch below the spool flange. All pipe is hydro tested on a specially designed spool at the factory. Shipping spools are not suitable for hydro testing and RTP should not be filled with water and hydro tested while on a shipping spool. The caution is RTP wound on spools has some stored energy. 
ensure that the pipe end is restrained during all operations to avoid rapid release of the energy and potential injury to the personnel and damage to the pipe and equipment. Handling of RTP will normally be deployed to location already on the spool equipment, which eliminates the need of any local handling. In cases where this is not possible or practical, it may be necessary to handle individual spools of RTP. Care must be taken in these cases, as spools of pipe tend to be top-heavy and can overturn. A manufacturer representative must always be on location when spools of the pipes are handled. On rare occasions, it will be necessary to upright the spool after unloading in order to place them in an upright spooling frame. The preferred method of uprighting a pipe spool is to use a crane equipped with a second line. Caution: Improper handling of spools RTP can result in personal injury, as I mentioned before, as well as damage the product. Ensure that the lifting equipment used, including straps, slings, and spreader bars, are in good working condition and are rated for the load and conditions. The Use of spreader bar and slings is required when moving spools with a crane. In the absence of a crane, two forklifts can be used. The bar is placed through the center hole and a forklift is positioned on each side of the spool. The forks are used to lift the bar, raising the spool. How about the storage of RTP? Spools of the product should be stored on level surfaces with no protruding objects that might contact and damage the pipe on its outermost layer. It is also required that spool placed on soft surfaces such as dirt or gravel have suitable support to prevent the spool flanges from shrinking into the ground. The use of 6 inch by 6 inch timbers is recommended for this purpose. Block or otherwise ensure spool cannot roll. Do not store the spools on slopes. If storage is to be an extended period of time, the pipe should be protected from freezing. Spools of RTP may contain some water from hydro testing or condensation that can freeze and damage the pipe. How to handle the RTP pipe in low temperatures? RTP line has a minimum operating temperature of minus 20 degree Fahrenheit which is equivalent to minus 34 degree centigrade and a minimum installation temperature of minus 22 degree Fahrenheit which is equivalent to minus 30 degree centigrade. Lower temperature down to minus 50 degree Fahrenheit which is minus 45 degree centigrade will not damage the stored pipe. In cases where RTP line pipe is stored in temperatures lower than this, it is good practice to ensure that the temperature has risen to a safe level before uncoiling and handling. When at low temperature, the body of the pipe represents a substantial heat sink and it is therefore important to ensure that fluid pumped into a cold line cannot freeze. Field transportation of RTP. When transported in the field for deployment, the spool must be mounted in a suitable spooling frame. Transport should be on a trailer that is as close as to the ground as practical. Be aware of any overhead power lines or other overhead obstructions that may come into contact with the spool. Caution, spools make top heavy loads. They are easily overturned. The spools and the frame should be mounted as close as to the ground as practical and the frame securely chained to the trailer. During transportation, speed should be reduced and turns negotiated with. The spools are used to transport, the de transport and deploy the pipe. Spools are typically 12 feet, 14 feet and 16 feet which is 3.7 meter, 4.3 meter or 4.9 meter in diameter 
can be manufactured from steel or wood. The core diameters of RTP spools are selected to ensure that the bending strains are within available limit. Hydro testing of RTP line pipe is carried out on specially reinforced spool at manufacturing locations. RTP line pipe must never be subjected to pressure on a shipping spool. Spool equipment. RTP has designed and manufactured spooling equipment suitable for deploying the re-spooling of RTP line pipe. Approved equipment must be used for these operations. RTP can be spooled using three spooling frames. All three styles of frames require a hydraulic power assembly for operation of the hydraulic drive control motors and level wind arms on the corrosion frame. The hydraulic power supplies are either gasoline or diesel driven and connect the deployment frames by a high pressure hoses and quick connect coupling. Here are the comparison of three types of frame generally used as a shipping frame. First one is rim drive A frame, then chain drive A frame and the third one is carousel. If compared rim drive and chain drive, they are loaded vertically whereas carousel the spool uploaded horizontally. A frame rim drive deploys smaller diameter spools 12 feet in US, 14 feet in Canada and pipe sizes up to 3.5 inch. Rim drive is a frame with an integrated driver that controls the deployment rate with a hydraulically driven rubber tire in contact with one of the flanges or rims of the spool. It is low profile allowing deployment with a loaded drill. One of the two frames can be loaded on a double drop trailer can be transported and deployed without requiring a crane on location. It is not suitable for re-spooling operation. The chain drive A-frame, also loaded vertically, deploys larger diameter spool. This is a frame type that has a chain and sprocket drive mechanism with integrated drive dogs that engage in the flange of the spool providing a positive drive system. The spool has to be fitted with a shaft to be fitted into the frames. Not suitable for deployment from a truck trailer and normally restricted spooling operation in yard except in Canada where it needs a special arrangement where the frame is permanently fitted into two chain drives that take advantage of the local height restriction to transport two 16 feet diameter spools ready for deployment. It is suitable for re-spooling operation also. The last one is carousel which is spool loaded horizontally. It deploys larger diameter spools 12 feet to 19 feet diameter and pipe sizes up to 6 inch. If you like my way of teaching, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, please share with the friends who is looking for this type of knowledge. Signing off, Soumen.